I hope that's not who I am, Clay said. In the moonlight, Peril's expression changed, and he realized he'd hurt her feelings. Not, not that, he stammered. Nice work, Clay. How are you going to finish that sentence? Not that there's anything wrong with being a killer. Or maybe, but it seems to be going great for you. I mean, maybe I was born that way, but does that mean I'm like that forever? I guess I hope I have a choice, is all. I want to be who I want to be, not who I have to be. Right? Do you ever... I mean, wouldn't you want to be different if you could be anyone? No, Peril said, clawing at the rock under her talons. I've accepted myself, and I like myself this way. You should do the same thing. This quote from Chapter 16 of The Dragonette Prophecy illustrates the dichotomy in Clay and Peril's upbringing. This section of the chapter is huge to me, and very weighty. We see that not only has Peril aligned herself according to what the dragons around her, mainly Queen Scarlet, have told her is correct, but she's convinced herself that she truly likes it. She is so desperate to feel right, to feel like she fits in her slot, that she managed to convince herself that she liked killing dragons, that it was all she was good for. Peril claims she's accepted herself. And maybe she has, until someone like Clay comes along and shows her those facets of her personality are lies. Hello everyone, and welcome back to another What's Its Face. Today, I want to talk about Peril, Clay, and how when they're introduced in the middle of book one, they are foil characters. A foil character is a set of, usually two, characters, whose setup or childhood are very similar to each other, but who both go in different directions. Basically, they are meant to exhibit how each of them might have gone a different way. They can exhibit a villain versus hero dynamic, a friend versus foe dynamic, or, like Peril and Clay here, they can exhibit a behavioral difference. An important thing to note is that foil characters are not automatically enemies, and there doesn't have to be a bad guy and a good guy. It's just a character who contrasts the traitor actions of another character. So for Peril and Clay, there's a pretty obvious similarity in their upbringing. Both were told from a very young age, basically from the moment that they hatched, that they were born to be monsters. Clay, because his guardians mistakenly assumed he attacked the eggs around him, and Peril because of her fire scales abilities. Both were under extremely heavy pressure to perform to this expectation as well. Kestrel and Dune were constantly goading Clay into finding his inner monster, and Queen Scarlet literally had Peril murder other eggs and fight in an arena. The area where they differ, obviously, is that when we meet Clay and Peril in Book 1, they both have very different opinions on their supposed monster status. Clay doesn't believe he has any viciousness in him, while Peril has gone so far as to accept what Scarlet told her, and try to like it. I guess I hope I have a choice, is all. I want to be who I want to be, not who I have to be. This part of Clay's little speech exemplifies his attitude toward the things other dragons told him. He wants the freedom to choose, to make his own destiny in a manner of speaking. Meanwhile, Peril replies, I've accepted myself, and I like myself this way. You should do the same thing. And here's where I think they differ. Growing up, Clay had the other dragonettes, who helped reinforce the idea that he wasn't a monster in hiding, that he was instead capable of love and affection for his siblings. Unfortunately, from what we saw of Peril, it looked like Queen Scarlet was a large percentage of her social experience, and any other Skywings she saw, A, didn't seem to treat her too kindly, thanks to their own fear for powers, and B, probably wouldn't go against the word of their queen to try and teach Peril another way of life. I mean, we saw what happened to Osprey, Peril's only friend. If you tell a lie enough times, it becomes the truth to whoever hears it. And although both of these dragons were told that they had the heart and claws of a killer, only Clay had other voices around him telling him the truth. So Peril grows up, isolated and unable to make friends or even touch most things, with Scarlet controlling her life, manipulating her to stay at the palace, and telling her that she's a killer. She would have been cripplingly lonely. Lonely enough to risk her queen's wrath to go talk to a new prisoner, and lonely enough to make friends with a dry old dragon simply because he was honest with her. From what we see of Peril, especially in Book 9, she's a pretty extroverted dragon, and this isolation would have been extremely bad for her mental state. Not to mention, it had been going on since the moment she hatched, so Peril would have had years of unhealthy dependency on Scarlet to work through. And I think that at some point, Peril started agreeing with the lie. As a dragonette, maybe she had doubts. When she saw the egg Scarlet forced her to burn withering, I know she did. But at some point, it would have been too hard to keep doubting. Scarlet reinforced her lie over and over again. 
Eventually, Peril realized it would be easier to give in and play the part, than try to love herself anyways. If nobody else will ever love you, the best option is to love yourself to an unhealthy degree. And what do I mean by this? Well, while it's certainly good to have self-love, like any virtue, it can carry over into a vice. Self-love should never blind you to your faults or areas in your life where improvement is necessary. We have to love others in the same way, appreciating them, but always encouraging them to improve themselves. Peril is so starved for acceptance and approval that she takes it too far, stubbornly insisting that she's fine the way she is. This is unhealthy. During chapter 16, she is refusing to admit that anything she does is wrong. Later, in book 8, Peril learns to love herself while still admitting that she isn't perfect, but way back at the beginning of her character arc, this is sadly not the case. That's the dragon that we meet in parts 2 and 3 of book 1. Peril is wild and tends to go back and forth with no warning. Clay's earliest conversations with her seem to be very confusing because I think Peril herself is just super confused. And when Clay so sincerely cuts to the heart of the issue, asking her, wouldn't you be different if you could be anyone? It flusters and hurts her. Because for just a moment, it cuts through the lie Peril has told herself, that she's happy being Scarlet's monster. Because she can't escape, so she tries to make the best of it. She can't have anything different, so she has to love her situation. And as her relationship with Clay progresses, and she begins to see that there's another option, that she really can decide not to be a monster, we see her change rapidly. Clay shows Peril that she can act differently. He is her foil. His actions contrast hers as starkly as day and night, and set a new example for her to follow. Now, Rome wasn't built in a day, and Peril doesn't change overnight. She has some false starts before she's truly able to put Scarlet and her manipulation behind her, but after that, her life takes on a different direction. Now, before I close out, I do want to mention something that I was thinking about while reading the first book recently. I do think it's a little weird on both ends that Peril and Clay are together. For Clay, he, what, fell in love with the second dragon he met outside the caves? And Peril literally fell in love with the first dragon who didn't see her as a murderer. I do think they're a cute couple, but I'm not a huge fan of how they met. I think the two of them, but especially Peril, should have had some more time to grow as people before dating each other. Also, although I know it's handy that ever so conveniently Clay is one of the very few dragons Peril doesn't burn, it was stated that it still hurts like it's burning him. I just think it's a little weird. Sometimes it seems like they got together simply out of convenience. She couldn't set him on fire, he refused to accept she was destined from hatching to kill people, and it doesn't seem all that grounded. Again, I don't necessarily hate the pairing, it just strikes me a little oddly on occasion. As always, I tend to be more of the opinion that romance is best left for after the character development, I don't think that they could never work out, but I do think that there are some tricky things to navigate in their future. Anyways, that's all my thoughts on the matter at the moment. What do y'all think? Are Peril and Clay foil characters, and what are some ways you notice that they differ? What do you think about Clairol? And of course, links to my DeviantArt, Redbubble, and commissions are in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and please have a great day. Shut